The Legina brothers recently made a revolutionary discovery that was about to give them a new lead and get them one step closer to the treasure. They discovered an underwater cave, and here is the most shocking part. The cave might have just revealed a new location where the treasure can be hidden. Join us as we enter the cave and find the precious treasures of Oak Island. In the heart of the money pit, brothers Rick and Marty Legina were about to go on their first chance of the year, a personal examination of the ongoing reconstructions of the garden shaft, a historic mid-18th century building. This incident was critical for the brothers because it marked a turning point in their quest to uncover the mysteries of Oak Island. As they explored the depths of this structure, the brothers couldn't escape the impression that they were on the verge of a breakthrough. Since their return to the island three weeks ago, Dumas contracting limited officials have been hard at work, expanding the renovated 82-foot deep shaft to 87 feet. Their unwavering efforts were motivated by the objective of reaching a total depth of nearly 100 feet, an ambitious undertaking that carried the possibility of revealing long-buried mysteries hiding under Oak Island's depths. The seven-foot-high tunnel, rumored to have been uncovered during a strategic core drilling operation, was important to this expedition. Carbon analysis showed that this intriguing tunnel might date back as early as the 17th century. The tunnel, which ran east to west, played an important role in the Oak Island team's exploratory plan. Its path led to the so-called Baby Blob, a location where large amounts of gold, silver, and other precious metals had been discovered in groundwater between 80 and 120 feet. Rick and Marty Legina entered the site to investigate the water problems raised by Dumas authorities. As they descended into the shaft, they were met with the ongoing difficulty of water infiltration, which has hindered building activities from a depth of 60 feet and upward, disrupting the progress at every step. Dumas contracting authorities revealed their proposal to address the issue, offering to punch nine holes and insert urethane to stop the flow of water. Rick adds that using a specialized material, an expanding foam spray, which could be sprayed under pressure. As the foam swelled, it formed a tight barrier, essentially barricading the entry of water and perhaps eliminating the problem once and for all. The potential of using this unique technology provided a ray of optimism in the middle of the problem, presenting a possible option for attaining their aim of reducing water penetration. With the knowledge of the Lagina brothers and the assistance of the Dumas contracting team, preparations were put in action. Once the crew arrives at the assumed tunnel below, Dumas will use probe drilling instruments to search for possible riches within a 40-foot radius. If critical clues are discovered but the old tunnel is inaccessible, Dumas is willing to build a new tunnel to improve access. Later that morning, as Dumas conducts their excavation work at the garden shaft, geologist Terry and archaeologist Moya McDonald monitor the core drilling operation at Bore Hole KL 14.5 which is located around 60 feet southwest. This boring hole is carefully designed to reach the core of a cave system about 150 feet below the surface. Their collaborative efforts aim to unearth any major geological or archaeological discoveries that may lie within the cave's depths. The crew is preparing to install a camera down drill hole KL 14.5, eagerly awaiting any evidence of human activities within the cave with reports indicating a big 10-foot open area that exceeds any previously reported size. The crew, armed with the powerful Optic Spectrum 120 high-definition camera, intends to properly study the vast cavern. The camera, which is specifically designed to perform well in low-light conditions, also has the capacity to pan and tilt, providing a complete 360-degree view of its surroundings. This cutting-edge equipment improves the team's capacity to examine every nook and corner of the cave, raising the chances of discovering important clues regarding past human activities within its depths. As the camera lowers down drill hole KL 14.5, the team's anticipation builds as they look for traces of human intervention within the cave. Suddenly their collective gaze is drawn to a square-shaped item like a bolt and clearly man-made in appearance. Marty Legina, with a mix of enthusiasm and caution, recognizes this discovery as the evidence they've been looking for implying the presence of previous human activity. However, he maintains a level-headed attitude, declining to characterize it as definite proof just yet. Rick joins in, emphasizing the potential significance of such a discovery, claiming that any man-made item recovered beneath the island's surface might have a far-reaching outcome for unraveling its mysterious history. The team considers the potential that subsurface currents disrupt sediment, 
temporarily blocking the camera's lens. Despite this barrier, they see the cave's vast breadth as an ideal chance to comprehensively map its outlines with sonar equipment. In a couple of days, the much-anticipated sonar data will be at their fingertips, ready to give critical insights regarding the cave's size and the direction of subsurface currents. Armed with this important knowledge, the team hopes to methodically map out the unique underground landscape. Following the path of these enigmatic currents and revealing undiscovered chambers and tunnels beneath the cave's labyrinth depths. As we all know, for almost two centuries, Oak Island, Nova Scotia, Canada, has attracted treasure seekers with its mysterious charm, tempting them with the prospect of enormous riches buried under its surface. The search for the truth behind this long-standing enigma has inspired a slew of guesses and ideas, each with its own take on what lurks under the island's surface and who may be to blame. Several theories emerged as to who made treasures on Oak Island. The Christopher Columbus theory is one of the most fascinating of the many ideas offered over time. According to this belief, the famous explorer Christopher Columbus may have played a key part in concealing a massive treasure on Oak Island. While some may find the idea absurd, it has piqued the interest of scholars. In 2015, Jeff Irving, a researcher, presented Rick, Mary, Craig, and the rest of the team with an unbelievable situation. Irving's investigation allegedly revealed solid evidence tying Columbus to Oak Island, implying that the explorer may have buried items of tremendous worth during his travels to the New World. As the crew dives deeper into Irving's discoveries, they face the hard task of separating reality from fiction. Jeff's claim that the sought-after treasure on Oak Island may be the Ark of the Covenant adds to the already compelling story. His idea is based on the assumption that Christopher Columbus, with his close ties to the Knights Templar, had a key part in delivering the Ark to Oak Island. Discovering the historical links between Columbus and the Knights Templar strengthens Irving's claim. The fact that Columbus's wife, Felipa Moniz Perestrello, was the daughter of Bartholomew Perestrello, the Grand Master of the Portuguese sect of the Templar Order, adds an interesting layer of background to the story. Furthermore, the appearance of the Templar cross aboard Columbus's ships during his expedition to North America in 1492 demonstrates his close relationship with the mysterious group. What actually strengthens Irving's idea is the team's stunning finding in 2020. As they dug through the contents of a freshly drilled borehole in the Money Pit region, they came upon a surprising find, a boot heel that appeared to be of ancient origin. Recognizing the artifact's potential significance, the crew immediately submitted it for carbon dating, hoping to discover the mysteries hidden within its historical family history. The finding of the boot heel provides a concrete link to the past, hinting to the likelihood that the wealth sought on Oak Island is truly tied to Columbus and the Knights Templar. As the crew waits for the findings of the carbon dating analysis, excitement builds. Also, Craig's disclosure of two separate time periods, 1492 to 1662, emphasizes the ongoing historical relevance of Oak Island's riddles. Despite the relatively brief gap between these periods, their overlap reveals a centuries-long story generating curiosity about the island's mysterious past. Next, we have another theory, which is the Military Order of Christ idea. After many attempts, the team's hard work in 2020 produced strong evidence that transformed our perspective of Oak Island. After draining and digging the southeast corner of the triangular-shaped marsh at the island's center, the crew discovered a stone road, or possibly ship's dock, that was intricately linked to a cobblestone route leading to the money pit. This significant finding not only confirmed long-held theories about the swamp's artificial beginnings, but also prompted many concerns about its designers and their motives. Historian Terry DeVoe's observations offer light on the likely origins of this infrastructure, pointing to similarities to highways built in Europe around the 1500s. Drawing parallels to road-building traditions in Nova Scotia at the time, DeVoe suggests that the Portuguese, who were active in the region from 1522 until at least 1583, may have played a key part in the creation of Oak Island's perplexing roots. DeVoe's theory has major effects, implying a direct relationship between Oak Island and the Portuguese explorers who previously traveled the waters of Nova Scotia. When Terry DeVoe, president of the New England Antiquities Association, suggested that the recently found road on Oak Island may be 500 years old and of Portuguese origin, the team was intrigued. This idea opened up new paths of study pushing the team to learn more about the island's history and probable ties to Portuguese explorers. In 2021, a huge breakthrough happened when the crew discovered a piece of cannon metal on Lot 4. 
together with two little stone shots. One of these stone bullets was discovered deep within the money pit location, sparking theories among other specialists that they were of the same cultural era. This finding gave more evidence to support the notion of Portuguese participation in Oak Island's history. Seeking more ideas, the team traveled to Portugal, where they spoke with Corian Mole, a renowned historian and specialist on medieval structures and cathedrals in the region. During their tour, Corjan offered his persuasive notion that members of the Portuguese Knights Templar, known as the Military Order of Christ, may have visited Oak Island in the 16th century. Rick and other team members were thrilled by the rich history and complicated ties between Portugal and the Knights Templar as they visited medieval ruins and cathedrals with Corjan. Corjan's idea offered new light on the probable motives behind Portuguese investigation of Oak Island, fueling the team's drive to unearth the truth behind the island's secrets. Filled with new knowledge and a new feeling of purpose, the crew returned to Oak Island, ready to continue their search for answers. Exploration of many fortresses originally controlled by the Portuguese Templars between the 12th and 16th centuries found startling parallels to those discovered on Oak Island. The scientists discovered sculptures and buildings, like those found on the island, providing convincing proof of a common cultural and architectural legacy. One especially remarkable find was a 90-foot deep ceremonial well that bore a striking resemblance to Oak Island's famous money pit. This strange imitation suggests a planned homage or sacred significance for the island's mysterious characteristics. A critical moment occurred during a visit to a military museum in Lisbon, when the crew stumbled upon a 500-year-old cannon that exactly matched the stone bullets recovered on Oak Island. This evident link provides more support for the hypothesis of Portuguese participation in Oak Island's history. However, the most convincing evidence was discovered near the village of Alcadesera, when Rick and his colleagues came across a Roman-era stone road. This route effortlessly led to a cobblestone path that mirrored the one discovered in Oak Island's marsh. A thorough examination showed startling parallels between the two paths, suggesting a direct relationship between the Portuguese Templars and the creation of Oak Island's strange infrastructure. Since the team thoroughly documented and analyzed the findings' implications, a clearer picture emerged. The convergence of archaeological data from both Oak Island and Portugal presented a compelling picture of Portuguese discovery and Templar influence that spanned continents and centuries. Lastly, we have Zena Halpern's Knights Templar idea, which is ranked as the number one notion in the Oak Island treasure hunt story, and it emerged as a watershed event in the team's search for answers. In 2016, the late author Zena Halpern shared her revolutionary research with Rick, Marty, Craig, and the rest of the team, revealing a centuries-long story linked with Oak Island's riddles. Halpern's study focused on historical maps from the 12th to 14th centuries that prominently displayed Oak Island, as well as a hidden cipher thought to have been constructed by Knights Templar members. She emphasized a text from 1178 to 1180 that described a Templar expedition to the northern region of America, concluding in a landing on an oak-covered island. This significant discovery established the groundwork for Halpern's argument, which proposed a direct link between the Knights Templar and Oak Island. Halpern dug deeper into her discoveries and discovered a map going back to 1347, which she diligently analyzed to fit together the mystery. She insisted that all roads lead to gold, highlighting the Templars' desire for riches and power. The Knights Templar, which were created in Jerusalem in the 12th century to protect Christian interests in the Holy Land during the battles that are believed to have collected a treasury of rare sacred items that they protected within their fortress. However, the Knights Templars' fortunes changed dramatically in the 14th century when they were abruptly abolished by the Pope and King of France on allegations of treason. Many Templars faced jail and execution, but their treasures remained unclear, fueling rumors that they had been secreted away to protect their legacy. Halpern's notion struck a profound connection with the crew, throwing new light on Oak Island's hidden history and reigniting their desire to discover the truth concealed inside its depths. As they explored deeper into Halpern's study, they found themselves on a journey through time, following in the footsteps of the Knights Templar and confronting centuries-old riddles. Then in 2017, the Fellowship made a crucial discovery, uncovering a massive stone-paved feature that stretched across the marsh. Using advanced carbon dating techniques, Dr. Spooner examined a branch stuck within the structure, providing valuable information about its age and construction. 
Furthermore, the team's research found the stone well on Lot 26, which is famous for its high silver content. Dr. Spooner's expertise was once again called into play when he precisely dated this critical discovery. These finds provided support to Zena's claim, implying that the Knights Templar paid many visits to Oak Island over centuries. Zena's claims of Templar involvement in the 12th century, as well as a return to the island some 200 years later, were more possible in light of the team's findings. The team's studies revealed further supporting evidence, including the discovery of a wooden structure just north of the marsh. This result supported Zena's opinion that a dam was existing in the area, as suggested by the alleged Templar map dated 1347. With each fresh revelation, the pieces of the puzzle began to fit together, creating a fascinating story of Templar activity on Oak Island. The combination of historical study, archaeological evidence, and scientific analysis provides a better understanding of the island's mysterious past and possible link to the Knights Templar. Also, in 2017, Rick Legina and Gary Drayton made a significant find that sent shockwaves across the Oak Island treasure search. The Little Lid Cross discovered at Smith's Cove was traced back to its origins in southern France, where its composition dates from the 14th century, using cutting-edge scientific testing. This finding was an emotional moment in the search for Oak Island's mysteries, offering physical proof of a link to faraway locations and ancient times. The significance of this discovery was heightened by its close likeness to sculptures found in a 14th century Templar jail in Dome, France, as well as a Templar cave recently discovered by Rick and his crew near Camerano, Italy. The striking parallels between these artifacts and the lead cross discovered on Oak Island sparked speculation about the island's actual origins and possible links to the Knights Templar. The effects of this discovery shed fresh light on Zena Halpern's views, implying that she may have found the actual start of the Oak Island treasure mystery. Her thorough study and insights regarding Templar activities in the 12th and 14th centuries suddenly gained trust, matching the actual facts discovered by Rick and Gary. A new day begins at Oak Island, as Rick Legina and metal detector specialist Gary Drayton set out on their quest for Lot 5, with a focus on solving the riddle of the mysterious stone structures spread around the area. Their research begins in a circular depression that was recently dug and contains artifacts from the 17th to mid-18th century. Gary and Rick carefully inspect the surroundings, finding numerous suitable targets for future investigation. With the agreement of archaeologist Laird Niven, they begin to dig up these highlighted spots in quest of new evidence. As they dig further, they come upon a stunning discovery, a lead shot buried amid the treasures from the circular feature on Lot 5. Its existence raises fascinating issues regarding its origin and potential importance, particularly given that it might date from the 1700s. Could this lead shot be another piece of the jigsaw, indicating a link to the Duc d'Anville ship's log? The record, which details a French naval effort aimed at burying wealth on a nearby island in 1746, provides historical context to the finding. The potential that this lead shot is connected to the secret treasure sought by the Duc d'Anville crew creates excitement and expectation among the squad. Rick Legina and Gary Drayton proceed in their quest and their efforts yield yet another unexpected discovery, a strange object that challenges easy identification. Confused by its unique look, they seek professional advice from archaeologist Helen. Helen speculates that the item may be gun-related, maybe a gun sight. The discovery of a probable gun sight adds a new dimension to the current research, implying a military context for the artifacts unearthed on Oak Island. Rick considers the larger significance of this discovery linking it to the overarching story of the Duc d'Anville expedition and its probable role in the area's history. With a growing collection of artifacts suggesting military relevance, the team decides to put the newly discovered object through thorough laboratory evaluation. They are motivated to find more evidence and explain the mystery of Oak Island's history. Later that afternoon, in the Oak Island Interpretive Center, Rick Legina, Craig Tester, and other team members meet with archaeologists Laird Niven and Emma Culligan to seek professional study of the artifact discovered on Lot 5 the day before. With expectancy in the air, the crew awaits any insights that may shed light on the artifact's origins and importance. As the archaeologists do their investigation, they decide that the artifact is most likely a ramrod guide for a musket, a smoothbore long gun produced in Europe in the early 16th century. The ramrod guide is an important component that helps the operator feed lead or stone rounds into the muzzle of the musket, 
allowing the firearm to operate more efficiently. The team discusses the potential consequences of this discovery. If the artifact is a musket, it raises issues about its precise kind and date. Muskets, according to researchers, might date back to the 1600s or 1800s, spanning centuries of military history. However, one unique aspect of the artifact catches the team's attention, the existence of a hole, which is not common in similar artifacts of this type. This abnormality adds another layer of fascination to the artifact's tale, raising discussion about its peculiar properties and potential importance. As the meeting unfolds, the crew participates in a lively exchange of ideas, considering many possibilities and speculations about the artifact's origins. With each new insight gained from the archaeologists' investigation, the team's comprehension of Oak Island's rich history grows, fueling their drive to discover the truth concealed within its ancient soil. Earlier this morning, archaeologist Emma processed the artifact with a Skyscan 1273 CT scanner, which used non-destructive X-ray radiation to penetrate corrosion and expose crisp 3D photographs of the item and its detailed intricacies. As the crew studied the artifact, they were surprised to find strange Roman numbers written on it, adding another layer of mystery to their ongoing research. The meaning of these Roman numbers was consistent with Rick, Mary, and the late Dan Blankenship's prior finding in the 1970s. During that period, they built an earthen cofferdam around Smith's Cove on Oak Island's eastern edge. Their goal was to drain the land and seek for evidence of a legendary flood tunnel system thought to serve as a booby trap for the original money pit. Dan Blankenship's efforts paid off when he discovered a spectacular 65-foot-long U-shaped wooden structure in Smith's Cove. This structure, covered with Roman numbers identical to those seen on Lot 5's artifact, captured Dan's imagination. He assumed it was an encircling barrier built as part of the flood tunnel system to protect the money pit from entering and preserve its secrets. The similarities between the artifact and Dan Blankenship's find add validity to the idea that Oak Island's past is inseparably linked to ancient engineering and strategic planning. The appearance of Roman numbers on both the artifact and the wooden structure indicates a planned and purposeful design, implying a degree of expertise and foresight beyond what was previously thought. The potential that the U-shaped structure, together with other features and artifacts discovered on Lot 5, are linked to a 1746 ship's log outlining the safe burial of riches in a deep hole on a forested island excites the crew. The connection between the Roman numbers found on the artifact and recollections of the U-shaped building begins Rick and the team's curiosity and suspicion. Rick discusses the significance of discovering Roman numbers on the artifact, adding that such inscriptions have not been found on any other artifacts to date. The fact that they were discovered particularly on Lot 5 reinforces the link and raises intriguing concerns about the island's past. Perhaps Lot 5's U-shaped structure and other characteristics are part of the sophisticated system detailed in the ship's log from 1746. The likelihood that Oak Island was the location where wealth was securely buried adds another degree of difficulty to the current inquiry. As another day passes, Rick Legina and fellow Oak Island landowner Tom Nolan lead the team in another excavation attempt on Lot 13, just northeast of the marsh, excitement builds for potential breakthroughs. Their attention switches to a mystery boulder formation known as the Quadrilateral, where they expect to discover critical information concealed therein. As excavation begins, the team's efforts reveal a potentially crucial discovery. The clay recovered within the Quadrilateral has a striking similarity to the characteristic blue clay discovered in the original money pit during the first major excavation in 1804. This blue clay coating served as a sealant, keeping water out of the shaft and protecting any riches concealed beneath. The similarities between the clay found in the quadrilateral and the blue clay recovered in the money pit grabbed the team's interest, prompting theories about potential links and impacts. The discovery of this distinctive clay raises fascinating concerns regarding the boulder's origins and potential significance in Oak Island's hidden past. Curiously, the crew recalls making a similar discovery while investigating the circular structure known as the Eye of the Swamp in 2018. At the time, they came upon the same material, emphasizing the clay's importance as a repeating factor in their hunt for solutions. Rick Legina and the rest of the crew are filled with enthusiasm at the prospect of discovering proof tying the quadrilateral to the same persons who modified the swamp and built the money pit. Rick's theory that the presence of blue clay may imply the presence of an underground structure finds further support. 
generating curiosity about the discovery's possible importance. As they think about the consequences, the team explores the type of the structure that may be beneath the quadrilateral. Could it be a secret room, a vault, or possibly an entire complex built by the mysterious architects of Oak Island? The thought of such a structure, containing anything of great worth, whether riches, artifacts, or ancient mysteries, sparks their interest and motivates them to dive deeper into the puzzle. The next morning, Rick Legina and the crew return to Lot 13, accompanied by geoscientist Ian Spooner, to investigate the intriguing quadrilateral structure in further detail. As they examine, they see varied colors of clay inside the formation, indicating layers of silt accumulated throughout time. Ian Spooner's experience provides vital insights as he examines the quadrilateral's geological composition. His discoveries may provide insight on the formation's origins, possible age, and any clues it may carry regarding Oak Island's mysterious past. Rick Legina's claim that the quadrilateral is a human creation resonates emotionally with the crew, sparking their drive to understand its mysteries. The presence of massive rocks neatly organized inside the formation shows deliberate human activity, opposing accepted theories for its development. As Rick considers the quadrilateral's importance, he presents the tantalizing prospect that it may contain insights critical to deepening their knowledge of Oak Island's confusing history. The thought of uncovering a treasure hidden under the formation sparks the team's interest, driving them on in their search for answers. Their efforts uncover another unusual discovery, an ancient iron staple that appears to have been abandoned within the quadrilateral. Speculation exists as they examine its possible importance. Could this hand-forged iron staple be an artifact dating back to the 6th century BC, implying the presence of ancient buildings waiting to be discovered? The team considers the ongoing value of the massive iron staple in the construction of both stone and wood constructions throughout history. The existence of such a staple within the quadrilateral adds support to the idea that a large structure is buried under its surface. Back at the Oak Island Interpretive Center, Rick and Marty Legina, Craig Tester, and Emma Culligan meet with blacksmith specialist Carmen Lega to learn more about the enormous metal staple discovered only one day before. Carmen's knowledge offers additional insight on the artifact, indicating that it may have been used in medieval times as part of a complicated rope and pulley system. Carmen notes that such staples were often employed to change the orientation of ropes, lift blocks, and even rock blocks and tackle. His assessment raises important questions regarding the staple's role and purpose in the context of Oak Island's history. While the team considers Carmen's observations, Emma uses an X-ray fluorescence spectrometer to do more investigation of the artifact. This cutting-edge technology emits gamma rays at metal objects to evaluate their elemental makeup and likely age. Emma's scan results promise to provide vital information concerning the origins and history of the metal staple, putting more light on its position within the intriguing quadrilateral feature. Carmen's expertise, combined with Emma's scientific research, creates a fascinating story about the artifact's possible importance. The idea that the staple may have had an important part in forming the quadrilateral feature centuries ago draws the team's interest and fuels their ambition to discover the truth concealed within Oak Island's depths. Emma's investigation indicates that the metal staple is 98% iron, with trace levels of silicon, aluminum, manganese, calcium, sulfur, and phosphorus. These elemental compositions give important insights into the artifact's origins and production process, suggesting that it was most likely created utilizing furnace technology appropriate for the historical period in which it was formed. Meanwhile, Jack Begley, joined by archaeologists Laird Niven and Helen Sheldon, continues their investigation within the 900-year-old stone well on Lot 26. Their goal is twofold, to find clues about the well's architects and to determine whether it contains precious treasures. The team's interest in the well stems not just from its status as the oldest man-made structure ever discovered on Oak Island, but also from recent water tests done by Dr. Spooner, which indicated significant levels of silver in its depths. While Laird works hard to keep the pump clean, Jack scoops mud from the well and deposits it in a trap, which Helen delicately sifts through once it is dried. Marty Legina is astounded by the finding of the 12th century well on Lot 26, which blends in perfectly with other significant elements on the island such as the paved area, the marsh, and the ship railing. The combination of these abnormalities suggests a vast and complicated past spanning millennia, driving the team's excitement and drive to discover Oak Island's mysteries. Later that day, 
Outside the Oak Island Interpretive Center, Helen and Emma combed through the materials gathered from Lot 26's stone well. Among the rubble, they discover a fascinating artifact, a metal thing like a nail, but with a peculiar feature. Its tip has been ripped off. Emma speculates that this artifact may be a handcrafted, possibly tied to a massive sailing vessel. She points out that machine-made nails were not widely used until approximately 1800, implying that this artifact may have existed before the money pit was discovered in 1795. Emma's notion sparks the team's interest, and they go on an investigation into the artifact's origins and purpose. Manu questions like, when was it created? How does it connect to the 900-year-old well on Lot 26? Could it reveal details about the people who built the well and their activities on Oak Island centuries ago? As they examine the artifact and discuss its consequences, the team's enthusiasm builds. The notion that this seemingly typical artifact may contain the key to revealing the secrets of Oak Island's ancient history adds another dimension of fascination to their ongoing inquiry. The other members, including Rick Legina, Oak Island historian Charles Barkhouse, and researcher Cor John Mole, set off on a journey that took them roughly 50 miles southwest of Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Their journey was encouraged by a conversation with a guy named Isaac, who suggested that certain engravings they are going to investigate may be linked to the strange activities on Oak Island. Corjan Mole has been an invaluable asset to the team's efforts over the last three years, sharing his considerable research and providing as a qualifying advisor, especially in foreign contexts. His discoveries have revealed a number of probable connections between the Oak Island Mystery and the Knights Templar, as we know is a Christian military organization said by some to have protected holy religious artifacts within the mythical money pit from the 11th to 16th centuries. One of Corjan's most intriguing revelations was a discovery made a year earlier in Portugal. He led the crew to several 12th century Templar strongholds, including the church of Fontercada, where they discovered stone sculptures that were very identical to those found on Oak Island. These finds have sparked discussion and increased the curiosity surrounding the everlasting mystery of Oak Island. When Rick Legina, Charles Barkhouse, and Corjan Mall arrive, they are greeted warmly by local landowners Isaac Refuse, who called them earlier, and Nick Freilich. Rick Legina expresses gratitude for the invitation and thanks Isaac and Nick for their hospitality. As the group meets, Isaac and Nick reveal a sign with deep roots in their land's history, the broadhead emblem which dates back to the 14th century. This emblem, a stylized portrayal of an arrowhead, has important value since it was frequently imprinted on things to indicate ownership by either the British government or the British nobility. In this thrilling finale to our Oak Island journey, we explored further into the mystery, revealing intriguing pieces of the puzzle. The broadhead emblem suggests a real connection to the past, implying layers of history still to be discovered on this enchanting island. In today's episode, the team carefully studies KL 14.5, looking for signs of old human activity hidden beneath the cave's depths. Various theories have emerged throughout time, ranging from Christopher Columbus to the mysterious Knights Templar. The finding of a lead shot and indications of quadrilateral construction only intensifies the mystery. The finding of a lead shot and signs of quadrilateral construction deepens the puzzle, leaving us tantalized by the truths that remain hidden. What happens next is completely unpredictable. Will they find the long-lost treasure hidden deep inside the cave? The answer will be revealed only with time. Regardless of the ending, this journey through Oak Island showed us the team's dedicated efforts to unravel the mysteries in the island. Subscribe now and join us as we eagerly anticipate the next episode. Stay tuned for updates. Thank you.